What's up, Hobby Maniacs? MBG back again with a new unboxing. This time we have the Harlequin Sky Reavers, which is a pretty interesting kit. I mean, we saw these jet bikes, what, eight years ago? Uh, Jess Goodwin kind of uh, had an idea, had a rough prototype for these things. And, you know, some people say we got them in 2011 with the Dark Eldar. It, it, got some sort of variant you know I didn't really see it with them but you can definitely trace a lot of the elements from the prototype ones showed off at that games day you know eight years ago to these ones here from you know the back of the uh, the back of the, the fairings here on the wings then you've got all these uh, the under section here of the armor plate and then the way this whole uh, riding fuselage kind of thing chassis is uh, constructed and assembled so you know when you take a look at that now you see some new design elements like this and these thrusters and the way that the cannon mounts and things like that and that's you know that's new stuff but you know truth be told I mean this is, this is really good this is really good looking design and you know the paint job is definitely pretty uh, pretty awesome too so you know, pretty pretty neat stuff here. We've got some really good looking uh, army coming out in the Harlequins. All sorts of new units straight from scratch. You know, the new rules, uh, war gear and uh, psychic powers were just kind of spoiled over the weekend. And now we've got this great look. It's what's really shaping up to be a good codex. Unfortunately, we're not sure if these codexes are going to be out next week. Uh, or this, I guess they're supposed to be out the 21st because of the longshoreman strike out in LA. So that's gonna be an interesting thing. You know, maybe people are gonna really start going digital. I'll probably download the digital copy if I can't find one locally, you know, because let's face it, the show must go on. <laughs> and you, you can't say that any more than with the Harlequins, right? <laughs> so let's take a closer look. I mean, you've got the new, you know, we've seen this since I guess the Eldar were re-unveiled back in June of, I wanna say 2012? Uh, it's hard it's hard or maybe the Wraith Knight box, but we got the new black box design Which is you know to showcase the model and make it look better. I, I, I have no I have no qualms about it I think it's I think it looks great and then on the back here You've got you know your your different product shots and all your different paints and things like that So very good pack packaging definitely very enticing to buy so let's take a closer look at the actual models on the inside themselves because there's some interesting things I want to show you guys. First off, you get, you know, an, another, let's zoom in and get y'all a little better shot here. You get your normal instruction manual. Boom. Then you get two of the larger flying stands, which we've seen. I think these are 60 mils. And the uh, little jet bike round peg kind of thing so they can pivot and invert. And then I wanted to show you this decal sheet, which I thought was pretty neat. So, <laughs> riddle me this, what does some of those runes look like, right? <laughs> you got some white, like, riddle runes, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> and then some traditional uh, Harlequin transfers up here, some different things, some Eldar warning runes, and, you know, the, the upside down uh, heart and the diamonds and things that we've come to see in a while. But those, uh, those question mark runes were definitely took me a little off guard. Then you've got this two-part sprue. Let me zoom out again just so you can kind of see this. So you've got, which is basically a crew sprue here, then you've got a jet bike sprue, and then another jet bike sprue, boom. So it forms this like kind of trifecta of sprue. So you get the two jet bikes, which remember normally we used to get three jet bikes to a box, and it was about the same price. And these are actually about jet bike size. I thought they'd be a little bit bigger, so I didn't have too many qualms about the price, but now it seems like we're kind of missing out on a, on a jet bike. You know, so if I could go buy the Dark Eldar Reaver jet bikes, which are GW Direct only now, incidentally, and get three for about the same price, or for, you know, the new stuff, I can get two. Kind of interesting. Think about that for a minute. So these two sprues right here, and let me show you. Boom. So these two sprues right here are exactly identical. Two jet bike sprues, and then you've got the crew sprues. So let's just throw this out. And now you can tell that this was sliced right here so this is actually how they cast it and ka-chunk this gets cut off and put you know boom like that into the packaging so now let's take a closer look at this sprue and kind of see what we can see here first off the one thing I wanted to share with you all is when you're cutting out these star bolas I've clipped quite a few bits in my time <laughs> I have cal you can't see them here but these hands are definitely calloused from cutting cutting down bits I'm a I'm a bit cutting pro so to speak if there was a a bit cutting Olympics I would be all about it so these be very careful when you're cutting these out you're gonna want to hold the star bola and then clip 
you know, as close as you can to the actual part without actually getting to the part because it's going to spring kind of out and it's, I know it's going to snap right there. So I don't want to see people ruining their stuff. Same for these halberds right here. These are very thin. I'd be very surprised if those didn't get away from you while you were cutting them. Something else I noticed on the sprue that I wanted to draw y'all's attention to, if I could find it, is this bit right here. A little devil uh, mask that you can actually use to make your own solitaire out of the harlequin kit because let's face it you get what six harlequins for 40 bucks you can buy the, the uh, solitaire for 26 right but if you have that bit right there and you don't mind not having a sweet you know crazy green goblin cape thing you can make a solitaire right out of that bit right there which I thought was pretty neat because you know you can save some money on that right so then, uh, back to the actual, you know, configuration here, you've got, you know, your, your top pieces that go together, and then you've got your side, your left and right side, which is pretty, you know, pretty conventional. Uh, this was kind of interesting, how this back fairing is supposed to glue together, and then you've got your, uh, your kind of your howda, for lack of a better term, for your uh, rider on the back that either has the halberds or the uh, star bolas, right? And then your uh, engine fairings. Now remember, there's a main thruster in the back, and then you've got a couple of uh, little, uh, I guess, maneuvering thrusters that go underneath the cannon assembly too. So you know, all in all, I mean, it's a pretty, it's a pretty neat kit. I mean, it's it's very well detailed. It's very well executed and done. You know, you've got lots of, you got all your parts here. You get extra parts, you get extra heads, all that stuff. So pretty, pretty cool kit. You know, overall, um, they look to be shaping up. Uh, pretty decently, I suppose, as far as you know, if you wanted to, um, you know, kind of kind of run the numbers on them uh, game-wise, I think we're definitely, you know, it's it's all in how you want to construct your army. And until we have the actual codex and we see what allies can be taken for what, you know, some people are like, well, I'm going to take the Star Bola because it's 12-inch range. You know, I can get that sweet um, small blast. You know, strength say I think it's strength six AP two. Which is great and all. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying. I'm not even trying to hate on those kind of stats. But the problem is that then your jet bikes are within 12 inches. Now, yes, they do get that assault move, that 2d6 assault move, right? But what if you don't get away and you get counter assaulted? And these guys fold when they get when they get assaulted and not on their own terms because you know their strength is only three. They're not going to beat anything off off of them with strength three unless you have something to come to the rescue. So you know you want to be very careful in that regard. You know as as far as um, you know uh, what 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 you you execute with. So it seems like the Zephyr Glaive might be better as far as you know strength five on the charge. You got your AP two. You got a ton of attacks. You got good toughness. Uh, you got high weapon skill. You know, for an Eldar, that is. So I think overall, it really just comes down to where are you getting your firepower from in this army? Are you getting it from your star, re or your void reavers in the back blast and stuff? Are you know, or is there more stuff to come out? Are there allies to utilize, or are you using these guys as the close combat detachment and not the Harlequin? So, you know, we're starting to see some of the word gear leaks. We're starting to see some of the um, what is it? The uh, the the special um psychic powers and those look really good don't get me wrong so it's going to be a very delicate dance so to speak uh for how you feel the harlequin so you want to be very very certain that when you when you pick these up that you have them armed i guess the way to uh get get the most the most bang for your buck because you don't want to arm them wrong but then again you can always just put these on them and say they have zephyr glaives or you know whatever and just say for this game they have they have this, or they have, you know, star bolas, or this cannon, or that cannon, you know, you can't, you can't really go too wrong, I mean, there isn't a whole lot of options for, for changing them around, so, just, uh, you know, just some food for thought there on what, uh, what to take, and how to arm these guys, and, uh, for what role, because we're just really starting to see some of the, uh, some of the actual rules drop, but, you know, the codex might be a little, a little longer, uh, in arriving, because of all of the delays with the, uh, the port dispute there so uh, kind of interesting stuff definitely a good kit definitely recommend it uh, you know so uh, if you're gonna play Harlequins you're probably gonna need some of these and what number we're not exactly sure like I said but hopefully uh, more details will be forthcoming because we don't really have a codex on the a new codex on the horizon we have some rumors about chaos maybe rumors about sisters but overall it's probably just gonna be some splash stuff and we're gonna start transitioning more to fantasy here soon so uh, that being said, you know, uh, definitely a lot going to be coming out here in the near future on these guys.
If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out the blog, spikybitsblog.com, and listen to our podcast, forgenarrative.com.